The first measurement we take is called the depth of sigh. So use your tape measure, place the middle of the tape at the nape, at the center of the back, center of the back neck. Let the tape fall naturally on either side and place the tape holding it vertically as close as possible to, under the arm. Ensure that you hold the tape parallel to the ground, straight. Don't drop the tape or don't lift it up. Because if you lift it up, you'll end up with the armhole being too tight. And if you drop it, of course, it'll be too deep. So be sure that you have your tape absolutely straight, parallel to the ground. Now you can put a crease on the shirt or have a pin ready and place the pin at the bottom of the tape. That way you're measuring close to the armhole because the tape is close to the armhole. But of course, when you place the pin at the bottom of the tape, then there will be some freedom of movement on the garment. So your first measurement is your depth of sigh. And if we're working in metric, the first measurement is 27 centimeters. If you hold on to the tape at that point, to the depth of sigh, get your customer to bend the elbow, and just in position of his elbow, that'll give you the natural waist position. Also, if you actually feel the hollow on the back, that also gives you the natural position. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to determine where the natural waist is, but if you focus on the elbow, that'll give you a straight line. And in this instance, if you actually push the tape into the body, not measuring straight down, but tuck the tape into the body, that'll give you measurement. Now in this instance, the measurement is 45. Now you can let the tape go and take all four measurements at the same time. The depth of side, the natural waist, the prominence of the seat, and the full length. The prominence of the seat is the highest point. In this instance, we've got 65 the highest point of the seat. And then the length of the jacket would be determined very much by the style that you're making. And, but a natural position is if you get your customer just to hold his fist um, and you think in terms of the knuckles, so he should just about be able to hold on to his jacket and not have too much of the cloth in his hand. So if we measure down to the, the knuckle position, so you get your customer to hold his hand in the knuckle and use that line as your jacket length, and in this instance is 76. 30 inches for those of you who work in inches. Always remember to take the pin out and don't leave the pin in the center back of your shirt, of your customer's shirt. Could be painful. Now we take vertical measurements first. So this next measurement is actually a vertical measurement, which is a check measurement, which is a crown to cuff and the width of back, elbow onto sleeves. So the first measurement we'll be taking is from the center of the back. It's also useful if you need to, to get to determine exactly the width. And if your customer is wearing a shirt, more often than not, where the armhole is and where the seam of the shirt is, that gives you the width of the back. Alternatively, you can place the tape like this vertically. And so that'll tell you the width of his back. And from this point here would be his arm from here to the center would actually be the width of the back. As the cloth is folded and is cut into double, we tend to take half of the measurement rather than the whole measurement because your cloth is already doubled. So you don't need to actually take two uh, measurements. So you don't need to take the full width across the back. So at the very center of the back, you place the tape at the center and measure across. In this instance, we've got 23 half across back, you ask your customer to raise his arm and in and measure to the prominent part of the elbow, 55, and then to the cuff. So just about where this bone is, the wrist bone is, that will give you the cuff length or the sleeve length, 83. We then take a crown to the cuff measurement, the crown, elbow, and cuff. Just relax your arms, please. Place your hand on the shoulder. And the reason why you're placing your hand on the shoulder is because in most jackets you've got shoulder pads. The thickness of your finger is actually the allowance of the shoulder pads. And because the shoulders are rounded, 
And on the garment that you're making, it has a more defined shoulder line and then a sleeve line. This here is where the shoulder pad would be. So your shoulder pad would be more or less like, like this. So that gap is really the width of your finger. So you place your finger there and use your thumb. If you take your thumb and just hold on to the tape like this and measure from the top of your finger down to the elbow. So just feel the prominence of the elbow. In this case it's 35. And then down, straight down to the cuff. Again, you're measuring to the bottom of the wrist bone. The next measurement we take is the, the chest. You use the mirror as an aid, but you work from the back and you work at the side. So you don't have to keep going around the customer. Place the tape under the arm and to the most prominent part of the chest. Relax your arms, please. You must hold the tape parallel to the ground, straight. Because if you take it up or down, you'll be getting different measurements. And this is a snug measurement. So when you're taking the measurements, you're actually measuring the figure as it is. However, it is advisable to just have a couple of fingers inside the tape, pulling the tape taut instead of tight. And that gives you a very small amount of ease, which you would need. Now the waist, and this is the natural waist, which is the position of the elbow. This is the natural waist we're taking here. And this has nothing to do with the trouser waist. The trouser waist we'll take separately because the trousers is really very much where your customer will be wearing the trousers. Again, ensure that the tape is straight and that'll give you the jacket waist, 110. And then we go on to the seat. So you take all the measurements, you take the chest, waist and seat. So what we've done is taken the vertical measurements of the jacket first and now we're taking the horizontal measurements. On a, on a man, most men they actually fairly flat at the side, so you place at all your fingers inside the tape and hold the tape across fairly snugly like this. Make sure the pockets are empty, so there, the most prominent part you're measuring. So the trousers will be taking to the, you, do, you establish with your customer, establish with your customer that the position he's wearing the trousers is where he'd like to, to wear the trousers on his new suit. Very often when you ask a customer that, they pull their trousers up. But um, are you happy with the position you're wearing the trousers? Good. Now we're about to take the side seam measurement, including the waistband. When we actually take this measurement, we're also going to be Rather like we did on the elbow, feel where the elbow position is. We're going to feel the knee position. We're going to take a knee position. So from the top of the band, establish the knee position. Hold on to the tape there. And then measure down to the welt of the shoe, the seam on the shoe. And the reason why we're measuring down to the seam of the shoe is because the seam on the shoe on both sides, the inside leg, and the outside leg, they're both the same. I mean, or you can measure down to the ground. But if you measure the trousers he's wearing, then you might find there's some discrepancies. Now we're going to measure the inside leg. So we use a brass edge tape so you can keep your fingers away from where it's too close and too personal. So here, we hold on to the tape. At this point, you put it onto the end, then you just let the tape go and measure down again. Measure down again to the welt of the shoe. Just put your finger into the edge of the tape or where you're measuring to and just look at it later on. You don't have to stay down there all the time. We're going to measure his actual waist where he's going to wear the trousers. And this is one of those measurements you don't shout out loud, you just keep it quiet. And you, you have a discussion with the customer of how it feels when, he's, when you measure him. So you either pull it in, how does that feel? It's good. Is that too tight? And is that too loose perhaps? So right. So we're not going to tell him what the measurement is, but in metric, actually we'll show him that. And if you turn it around the other side, that's what it is. But we're not going to shout this out loud. Okay. It's all part of the territory. <laughs> there are three more measurements on the trousers. And this thigh measurement is approximately 10 centimeters down from the top of the fork. 
and place your fingers inside of the tape and hold it like this. And that'll tell you exactly the width that you would need to finish. Because by having your fingers on the inside, that allows for a certain amount of ease. Now we're getting down to the knees. The knee position, you discuss with your customer whether he's happy with that width or whether you'd like it narrower or wider. And you place the tape around, pull the trousers out just to make sure, pull it back or pull it forward either way, whatever width that is. Just make sure that you are taking the correct measurement. Make sure you're taking the correct measurement by holding on to the tape as well as having had that discussion with the customer, you can determine whether the size is right. Of course, you'll be having a fitting and then the customer can then make a final decision at that time. But this is the width. Alternatively, alternatively you take a net measurement of the knee and then you add approximately 10 centimeters onto that net measurement and that will give you a width. And of course the ankle is pretty self-explanatory, the same system you measure around the ankle, either the, the width of the trousers or his actual ankle and then add 10 centimeters onto that. Now 10 centimeters is just a guide measurement, it depends on the style your customer wants, you can actually add more or less. Now for the waistcoat measurement. The waistcoat measurement is taken from the top of the vertebrae, the nape, the center back, measured to the V. The V here represents the top button. The last button is actually on the middle of the waistband of the trousers. So you measure down, straight down to the middle of the waistband of the trousers, in this instance, the middle of the, of the belt buckle. So all you need is two measurements, it's the top button, which is where the V is, and the last button. In calculating your direct measurements as well, you take the customer's height. Be sure that you're actually taking from the very top of his head and not at the top of his hair. So if you press that down a little, have him stand against the wall, make sure your, your ruler or whatever you're using is straight. And can I ask you to move now, please? You just put a little mark at the wall and then you take that measurement and you measure straight down to the ground. 